Welcome back to Broncos Beat. I'm Alexis Perry, joined by Mike Girardi, James Palmer, and Cecil Lammy. You guys, as I sat down for my coffee and clips this morning, unsurprisingly, Drew Locke captured the headlines after putting together a career day up against the Carolina Panthers on Sunday. But there were a number of other big playmakers for the Broncos yesterday that we really need to shine a light on, starting with the Broncos punt returner, Deontay Spencer, who scored his first NFL touchdown off an 83-yard burst. It was the first one since Omar Bolden in 2015 at Indianapolis. So is it safe to say that Spencer really set the tone for this game for the Denver Broncos? Alexis, I think the team really calmed down after they saw this. And I think it kind of changed their demeanor on the sideline and changed the way they were operating. It's kind of funny. I'll, I'll stick with this game, but I was talking to McCole Hardman actually this past week going, when are you going to break one, man? I know these type of plays changed things. His way he broke one in the playoffs changed the way their game was going in their playoff game where they came from behind. And he said, I think I'm going to break one. I think I, he actually broke one against Miami and returned one. But the point of this is returners know the impact they can make in a snap. And I think it changed the course of the way the Broncos were feeling in this game. It was a great return. I mean, a really difficult start to it. And then he was just off. And, and, and I think the way it happened and the way it fell, you could see the sideline actually because he's running down the Broncos sideline. I think it just gave a different feel early on because the Broncos have struggled 16 straight games without a touchdown on their opening drive, longest active streak in the NFL. This helped them early on get their feet. All right, well, rookie wideouts Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler combined for 128 of Locke's 280 passing yards, each with two catches of 10 plus yards. So what excites you most about this duo, not just throughout these final three games this year, but for years to come, guys? I'm Mr. 2021. She's <laughs> yes, gonna, you are. That's where I live. I live in 2021. I think a lot of people right now would like to be living in 2021. But I think these two guys were robbed of their rookie season. And, and I think COVID played obviously a massive part in that. I'd love to see the way these two guys work with Drew Locke if they had an entire off season to work. If Jerry Judy, as Mike was talking about earlier, stealing my thunder as I was going to talk about how he runs great routes and never gets the football. If he had a full off season with Drew Locke, I would love to see where him and KJ Hamler are. And what Hamler is going to do for this offense, it's why Vic Fangio was in love with him. He wants to spread a defense out. And why is Vic in love with him, Cecil? Because he runs defenses. He knows what that does to him. He watches it in his division with Tyree Kill and McCall Hardman on that space being opened up for guys like Jerry Judy. Now they have tight end play like Noah Fant. You're going to have an offense that operates on multiple levels, but I think these guys were robbed of their rookie season because of everything that they've had to deal with. And I think we're just now seeing that things are coming together for both these guys a little bit. Cecil, I bet you love this. A week after you said that Drew Locke should never throw the ball up for Troy Fumagalli, I bet you loved to see him as Locke's favorite target on Sunday. Four catches for over 13 yards per on average. I think he might have heard you. But as a guy who gets very few reps in practice generally, he stepped up in a huge way on Sunday. What did you like about how he and Nick Vanette were really utilized up against the Panthers? I love how Pat Shermer put together this game plan because you saw Drew Locke regularly. He's been under center only 31% of the time. That is among the lowest in the NFL. In this game, it was 44%. So almost half the time, Eddie, and you saw that balance from the run game, from the wide receivers that we're talking about. And stop talking about the drops for Jerry Judy. It's not an issue. He's 84th in the drop rate in the NFL, tied with Devontae Adams. KJ Hamler's around the top 10, so he needs to clean that up. But with that speed, you see those two opening things up for the tight ends. And yes, Troy Fumagalli, I know he had vacuum hands coming out of college. I knew that, but against the Honey Badger last week, that was a problem. This week, not as much of a problem. So you like to see a guy elevate his game. Nick Vanette coming through to be that solid target because you need a struggle target as a quarterback in the NFL. And when the chips are down, who can I go to? The pressure's on. Those tight ends came through in a big, big way. It, it's such a, a big tight end league for me now. I, I think you've seen sort of the position morph and some of these guys are bigger, essentially bigger wide receivers. But when you have guys like Judy and Hamler on the outside, when you're, when you're able to, whether it's Vanette, as you mentioned, sort of as, as a safety valve, or of course, when, when Fant is in there, if it sort of fits in the same mold of the guys I was just talking about, you put those three guys on the same side, that puts the defense in a hell of a pickle. Like, cause they can all run routes. Hamler's got the speed. Like how do we defend this? How do we defend these three receivers on one side? And I think that's something you'll see when they can stay together and be healthy. And obviously that's been an issue uh, this year for, for that group. 
stay on the field together, that puts defenses in such a pickle in, in terms of how you want to defend that group and where do you want to put your best cover guy? Because quite frankly, all three of them at various points probably deserve that best cover guy. Well, it was another strong performance from the Denver D, especially given they were without their two starting corners. We saw some flashes of brilliance from the defensive backs at critical times throughout the game. So who stood out to you most defensively, Cecil? I will say Michael Ojemudia. That's a tough bill. I, I know Robbie Anderson, maybe not the household name, but that speed and all the weapons that they have out there for Carolina. I thought Ojemudia stepped up in a difficult situation. Give me Justin Simmons all day, every day. I, I mean, even when he's not making massive impact plays, the control he has over that defense, he's one of the most important players uh, for any team, in my opinion, in that back end. I think Philly was really missing Will Parks as they kicked him to the curb and had no really secondary play to go against the Saints. And I think him stepping in was a big part. But I think Bradley Chubb, too. You don't get the stats. He didn't have a sack. But, man, he was in the backfield drawing Teddy Bridgewater towards some of the other guys that were able to get those sack numbers. I thought he had a sneaky good game in how he was getting into the backfield.